Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this pretzel chain link design that will make a really cute decorative chain or of course you can use the links on their own. Now if you like my tutorials and you want to see more please feel free to like, share and subscribe and if you want to support me so I can keep making more there's also a super thanks button below the video. Otherwise if you want to learn how you can make this chain for yourself then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. Now I'm using a regular round silver coated copper wire and the gauge is a 0.8 mil. And as for the beads, I'm using 3mm rounds and the specific ones I'm using are blue coated hematite gemstone beads as they tend to have very generous holes, but of course you can use whatever you want to as long as the holes are large enough to take the wire through. As for the tools, we first of all need some flush cutters so we can cut our wire. I've got some tweezers on those pliers to help manipulate the wire. And then I'm using some six step bow making pliers to help make our loops and of course you can use round nose pliers for this. Now you'll find the material list and useful links in the description box down below. Otherwise, let's get it all ready and let's get started. So we then need to cut a length of a wire and really it's whatever you're comfortable working with. Usually I use about 40 centimeters or so and I use that length for multiple lengths. This time I'm just using a shorter length just for the sake of the video. So I'm gonna grab my length of wire here and then start towards one end and I'm gonna just have that facing away from me. Then about five centimeters down from the end or so, I'm gonna start adding a curve into it and bring it back around and then I'm gonna bring it underneath the short end and then we'll basically create a bit of a teardrop shape here and just get that pretty nice and small but make sure you can fit the bead in there. Then I'm gonna take the long end and we then need to bring it back the other way again but make sure we again add a curve and now bring it over the top of the short end and then before I take it any further than this what I'm going to do is actually add my first bead so grab that and put this one onto the short end of the wire here and just let it slide down to where that wire is crossing underneath and then use that bead make sure it's pushed all the way down to help shape this length of wire because we want it tight around that bead. Bring it further around. And now what I'm going to do is take the end of the wire and just gently kind of put more of a curve into it and bring the end down through the other loop. So the very first loop that we made and just bring it all the way through and then we pull it out and then make sure that it's nice and tight around that bead. Now just straighten this out and then I'm going to take the other bead and add it onto the long end of the wire here that we've been working with. Get that all the way down and then make sure to push this to sit inside of the first loop there. Now you can see it's not nice and tight around the bead so what I'm going to do is it can be helpful to use a pair of pliers for this. Grab onto the length of wire because you get a better grip than just with your fingers and then just put your fingers onto both sides of your piece. Keep hold of that and then pull gently to make sure to tighten up that wire basically around the bead. And then we have the shape nicely in place. Now what we need to do is use these lengths to make our wrap loops with. So you can really position them however you want. All depends how you want the link to sit. So just straighten them out if you need to. And then I'm gonna grab my tweezer nose pliers and I'm going to first place this sideways and make sure to place the pliers a little bit above where the wire and bead is and then put a 90 degree bend into that. And then I'm grabbing my tweezer nose or round nose if that's what you're using. Put them onto the bend and then bring the end here around to create a full circle like that. And then I'm grabbing onto that full circle with my pliers to make sure it stays in place and then use the rest of the end to bring that around and make a wrapped loop. So basically just fill in that little space we left before making the circle and then we just want to cut off the excess, get rid of that end and then always make sure to squeeze the end down nice and tight so we can't feel it with our fingers. So that is now a wrapped loop on one end. On the other end I'm gonna also make a wrapped loop but what I like to do is make sure that they're sitting in opposite directions. So before, I started making my bend sideways, so we end up with a flat loop here. Here, I'm gonna have the piece facing towards me and then make a bend basically towards the back like that. And then again, grab your six step bow making pliers all around those pliers, make that circle. And now this is the point where if you're making a chain, for instance, you want to also start connecting your links. 
So I've already made a previous link here and to connect these two, I want them to sit like this. So this loop that's sideways is gonna then connect to a loop that's flat. So I'm just gonna follow the path and then get the end of the wire through the loop, bring it all the way up to then sit and obviously check if it's sitting correctly. And they are. Then I wanna just grab my pliers again to grab onto the loop so we can just finish off the wrap loop by wrapping a couple of times around that gap that we left. And then again, go in and cut off the excess. Make sure to always just squeeze down the end of the wire so you can't feel it. And then you have two links attached together now. And that's why I like to make my wrap loops facing in opposite directions because when you then attach them together, it makes the chain sit nice and flat. Now, if you need to, you can always take your pliers, just go in and flatten things down you find that they aren't completely flat but otherwise that's then how you make this chain link and connect them together to create a full length and of course you can then make it however long you want to. So of course you can use these chain links and create something like a bracelet or a necklace but you could also use them individually and make a cute pair of earrings or of course anything else you can think of but equally you could use it as a decorative chain for a pendant. Now if you want to check out more of my chain designs I have a whole playlist full of different tutorials. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box down below. And while you're there, you can always like, share and subscribe. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.